All right, we got ourselves a big topic to tackle here today, and that's going to be our horizontal and our phase shifts. And I want you to, first of all, let's establish the fact that phase and horizontal are synonymous, and they mean one and the same thing pretty much. And today we're going to use those words interchangeably with respect to our trig graphs. Uh, but what I've done is I've imported a picture here that shows both the, the sine curve in red and the cosine curve in blue. And what I want to talk about is these are essentially the same curves. The only thing that's different is because they have different starting points, they look like they're drastically different. But what we could do is we could take this cosine curve and what we could do is we could shift him or slide him um, pi over two units to the right. All right, do you agree with that? If I took if I took every single point that's on that cosine picture and I, I moved it pi over two units to the right, um, so basically what we've got is everything sliding over. The first point would now be there. Um, this point would be now be here. This guy would now be over here. This one would be over here, and we'd eventually get something that fit right on top of the sine curve, and it would just continue to follow and trace it all along. Now here's how we would write it. If we're going to do a phase shift, we actually do it inside the parentheses here, and we would say x actually minus pi over 2, and then... And that sounds a little, um, you know, bit unusual. We're going to use minus to represent right. And I'm going to put that right above the word right there. This graph would now be a perfect match for the sine curve itself. Um, so let's see if we could, we could also flip the scenario around and talk about could we move the sine curve onto the cosine curve. And here's what I want to do. If you look at the red curve, um, it, well, it used to be visible. It's kind of covered up partially now by the blue line. I want to take the sine curve and I want to shift it backwards, pi over two units to the left. It would now lay perfectly on top of the the red graph. And let's see. I would say if I wanted to go left, I would say quantity x plus pi over two, and that's now equal to the cosine curve perfectly. Uh, and anytime you want to go to the left, I'm going to put a little note here, we're going to use a plus sign in there. So it's basically just the opposite of what your common sense says it should be for horizontal shifts. And um, just uh, let's put one more comment in here. That minus sign meant to the right. This plus sign meant to the left. We'll put those, squeeze those comments in there. And that's how we get those graphs to, to lay perfectly on top of each other. All right, our general form has been building over the last several videos, and it's looking quite obnoxious at this point. We've got so many letters, but we're going to say y equals a times the sine of. Now watch this. We're going to have two sets of parentheses, and they're very important. b times the quantity x minus c, and then close all those parentheses, and then at the very end we have this plus d dangling. Okay, now again, x represents my angle, so a lot of times instead of x you'll see a theta there. But let's just recap what all of these letters stand for. Okay, first of all, the absolute value of coefficient a represents your amplitude or your height above your midline. Your b is your frequency, that's the number of cycles you're going to see between 0 and 2 pi. Um, the c value is going to be your phase shift or your horizontal shift left or right. Okay, so in those parentheses, I want to put some parentheses right here, and I want to say left or right. Okay, we're going side to side there. And then the last letter at the end that's outside the parentheses, that's your vertical shift value. And vertical shift means we are now focusing on going either up or we're going down. And that one's straight up. If you see a plus sign, you're going up. If you see a minus sign, you're going down. But just the contrary today, left means plus and right means minus. So we'll get those little signs in there. All right, now that we got the general form, I want to make one more ultra important comment here, and we'll put a monster uh, asterisk. Okay. All right, we have to have those two sets of parentheses. So you'll notice in that inner set of parentheses, there's a coefficient of 1 in front of that x. And let's just make a note of that, that we have to have a coefficient equal to 1 in front of that x in order to identify that phase shift. Otherwise, you're going to see a couple of tricky ones later in the video where we have to factor out a GCF first and create those two sets of parentheses. So basically, two sets of parentheses or else we are in trouble. All right? So we got that comment in our notebook. Now they're very famous on the Regents exam for giving you a picture and then asking you to identify the phase shift just by looking at the picture. And here's the easiest way to determine a horizontal shift is to determine how many units the quote unquote the starting point 
Okay. Now the starting point for the sine curve is going to be 0, 0. So we'll say 0, 0 for the sine curve. And then we'll say the starting point for cosine is 0, 1. That's the one that starts real high. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to determine how many units the starting point has moved to the left or to the right. So instead of, it's, it's kind of overwhelming when you look at the entire graph, but you, if you can just narrow your focus down to just finding where the starting point went, that'll really, really make your job significantly easier. All right, I've got three examples here where we, we're going to be given an equation and then we're going to identify the phase shift. In fact, I'm going to add to those directions. I want you to find the values of not only the phase shift, but also the amplitude, the frequency, the period, and the vertical shift. We're going to document all of that stuff for each of these examples. And my first one says y equals negative 2 sine of the quantity 3, and then another parenthesis, x minus pi over 6, and then we'll wrap up two closing parentheses plus 8. Now this is obviously the easiest of the three. We're always going to start with the easier one. So here's how this one shakes out. Do you notice how there's already two sets of parentheses? That's a good thing for you. All right. So we're going to say that the amplitude is the absolute value of that negative 2, which gives us 2. The frequency is going to be this coefficient right there. So you've got a, coefficient, or a frequency of 3. And uh, we're just going to see three complete sine curves at 2 pi. All right. The, which then that means that the period is 2 pi divided by that frequency. My phase shift, I'm going to use the letter C today. My phase shift is we're going to the right pi over 6 units. That's, um, remember, that's about 30, or I shouldn't say about, that is exactly 30 degrees. And, um, and that we talked on tangent yesterday, that's going to be one hash mark on the x-axis if we count every hash mark's 30 degrees. And then last but not least, our vertical shift for the letter D is going to be up 8. Now notice on both of those shifts, I used a very descriptive word for Phase shift, I use the word right. For vertical shift, I use the word up. So instead of just giving me a numerical answer, it's going to be both a descriptive uh, word, such as left, right, or up or down, accompanied with the numerical answer. So hopefully that one went pretty well. Let's try a slightly more challenging one now. Number two says y equals negative one half cosine of, let's see here, 2x plus pi over 4, and at the end we'll say plus 10. All right, significantly more challenging, and the reason is, is we don't see that double layer of parentheses. We only see the one layer of parentheses. So here's the trick. I'm going to have to factor out a GCF of that inside. And sometimes it's not going to be a very obvious GCF, but here's, the, here's what you want to remember. We need this coefficient on x to be a 1. How am I going to make that coefficient a 1? I'm going to have to divide that term by 2. So I'm, my quote-unquote GCF is going to be a 2. All right, now here's how we're going to set it up. If I divide that first term by 2, I get an x. If I divide the next term by 2, now here's what you get. Remember this, dividing by 2 is the exact same thing as multiplying by 1 half. So if I take pi over 4 and multiply by 1 half, I'm going to get pi over 8. Okay, and then at the very end, we do have that plus 10 that just carries down. So that was by far the trickiest part of this problem, pulling out that 2, using my two sets of parentheses. Now the rest is going to be a piece of cake. My amplitude is the absolute value of negative 1 half, which turns out to be positive 1 half. The frequency is 2, which means the period is a very convenient pi. The horizontal phase shift is going to be to the left, pi over 8 units. And then my vertical shift is going to be up 10 units. All right, there it is. Let's try one more that's very similar to that one. In fact, this is going to be the one where I challenge you to hit the pause button and go tackle this one yourself. It's very similar to the last one. Let's say y equals negative 5 sine of the quantity 3x plus pi over 2. And at the end of that, we'll have a minus 4. All right, let's see if you can come up with the amplitude, frequency, period, uh, phase shift, and vertical shift all on your own. Good luck. Okay, here we are. Uh, the big obstacle was right at the beginning where we identified that we did not have those two layers of parentheses. We just had the 1. So the only way that I could turn this coefficient into a 1 was to divide by 3. And I'm going to divide both of those terms by 3. So I've got pulling out my 3. Uh, the first term, instead of being 3x, is now 1x. 
And the second term is maybe the more challenging one. Instead of dividing by three, tell yourself this, I'm multiplying by one third. And you multiply straight across, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, we get that power six. And we've got our double layer of parentheses now with our minus four. So the amplitude is gonna be positive five, the frequency is gonna be a three. I've got a period of two pi divided by three. All right, a phase shift. I'm going to the left, pi over six units, and my vertical shift is gonna be this time down four units. Very good. Okay, and these next two, we're gonna be given, instead of giving an equation, they're gonna give us a picture, and then we're gonna to try to identify uh, the phase shift and, and maybe even get real ambitious and try to write the equation. Um, uh, the first one, I think, is a fairly obvious one just in the way that it was presented. Um, you'll notice the starting point for the sine curve used to be 0, 0. Now it's over here at pi over 6, comma 0. So we obviously went to the right pi over 6 units. And what that's, so there's your phase shift. It's just pi, we would just say the phase shift is pi over 6. If we wanted to write the equation, well, you'll notice the, um, the amplitude is a 2. We've got the sine curve and not the cosine curve. Now, by far the most challenging one for this particular problem is to figure out the frequency. Now, you'll see the curve starts at pi over 6 and it ends at 5 pi over 6. So if I subtract those two, if I do 5 pi over 6 minus pi over 6, um, that'll tell me how many radians it or how many, yeah, how many radians it took to complete that first cycle. Now in degrees, maybe this is easier, do one, try 150 degrees minus 30 degrees, that's 120 degrees. So if it took me 120 degrees to complete one cycle, then that means by the time I got to 360, I would see a grand total of three cycles. So there's your frequency, so the outer coefficients of three, and then inside the parentheses we're gonna say x minus pi over six, and then we're going to end it right there because we didn't have a vertical shift for this particular picture. Um, the other reason I thought that first one was a little bit on the easy side is because I didn't show you this part of the graph, okay? Um, that part wasn't there. A lot of times if that part is included, it's harder for students to see where the starting point moved to. Um, and it kind of starts to look like a cosine graph almost. So we just got to be really careful. And the more we practice, the better we'll get. All right, speaking of a little more challenging, let's see the second one. Again, we'll kind of ignore the fact that they have that answer there. Uh, just always assume that it's a sine curve, I guess is my best advice. If you go into each problem assuming it's a sine curve, you're probably going to be better off. Um, our starting point used to be zero, 0, Now they moved it 20 units to the right. So we'll say our phase shift is to the right 20 units. That's still radians, even though it's not in terms of pi. It's still radians here. Um, so we could say y equals, we've got an amplitude of a 1, and we've got sine of... Whoops, 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 whoops. I gotta call a mini timeout. I mistook. Uh, we, the phase shift is 20 units to the right, but what I, I lost track of is I did label this x axis in terms of degrees. So what we got here is um, we do have one, you see one complete cycle within the 0 to 360 interval. So our frequency is gonna be a 1, and then the inner set of parentheses will say x minus 20. Anytime we go to the right, we're thinking minus. And again, no vertical shift, so we don't have a plus or minus numbers at the end. But uh, I do want well, to apologize. That one is in degrees, and so we do see one cycle from 0 to 360, and that's how we knew our frequency was 1. All right, we're coming down the home stretch. One more example. All right, our last problem here is a word problem that's a, is just a great challenge. I think you're going to really enjoy this one. And I want to stress that there are multiple correct answers. There are more than one right answer. In fact, your answer technically could be in terms of sine or cosine and possibly still get it right if we have the appropriate uh, phase shift for that curve. I'm going to do mine in terms of cosine this time. And then uh, in class, uh, how about let's make this deal. I will award five points to anyone on their next quiz um, if they have an equivalent equation in terms of sine. Um, so we'll make that an extra challenge here that I think that you can capitalize on. But uh, they want us to um, identify the amplitude and the period and the horizontal shift and the vertical shift, and then we're going to put it all together and write the equation. So the, the key here for me is to find where the midline goes. We said the midline used to be the x-axis until we, until we started doing all these vertical shifting things. Now you notice the maximum height is up here at 32. 
All right, and the minimum height is down here at 2. And what's the average or the midpoint of 2 and 32? Well, we could add them together and divide by 2, and you'll get 34 divided by 2, which is 17. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find 17 here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a nice dotted line in there, and that's what I call my midline. All right, that's my midline right there. So the amplitude is going to be the distance between the midline and the maximum point. And the distance be from 17 down to, or from 32 down to 17 is going to be 15. So my amplitude is 15 units. Um, next thing. Figuring out the frequency is going to be a lot harder than normal because our x-axis wasn't labeled in terms of pi. Um, and this one is definitely in radians, I promise you that. Um, so here's the trick. We can figure out the period. And the period is how many, you know, how long does it take to complete one cycle? Well, I'm going to say this cycle starts at 3 and it ends at 31. So if I do 31 minus 3, that tells me it took me 28 days to finish the first cycle. And that's my period. Now, once you know the period, we can work backwards to find frequency. Do you remember how we said period formula is 2 pi divided by the frequency? Well, go ahead and substitute your 28 in there. And now we could solve for f. I'm going to cross multiply, and I've got 28f equals 2 pi, which means the frequency is really 2 pi divided by 28. And then as I reduce that, I could say the frequency is really pi divided by 14. So there we go. We're getting there. We've got an amplitude of 15, we've got a period of 28, and we've got a frequency of pi over 4. The next two are the, uh, the most interesting. Uh, the horizontal shift is, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with cosine. Now, we know that cosine usually starts at 0 comma 1, but I'm going to say this is an upside down cosine curve. So the starting point um, used to be 0, negative 1, and we went to the right 3 units. So I'm going to say that the phase shift is 3. It's an upside down cosine curve, so I'm going to negate my leading coefficient when I write that equation, and we went to the right 3 units. And then last but not least, we do have a vertical shift. Um, how far above the x-axis is the midline? Well, that's 17 units, so that's going to be my vertical shift right there. Let's see if we can't put this all together. I know there's a lot of information flying around here. Let's see if we can put it all together. We'll find a nice bold pen, and let's see here. Let's see if I can pick out a fun color. Yeah, maybe. That'll work. All right, let's say y equals. Now, my amplitude is 15, and I wanted to negate it because it was an upside-down cosine curve. All right, uh, let's see, the frequency was pi over 14, um, and then the phase shift was right 3, so I'm going to say x minus 3, and then at the very end of this equation, I'm going to say plus 17, that was my vertical shift. So that's by far, by far the most challenging problem we've done. Um, just remember the, the period was 28, now the 28 doesn't show up in the equation, but I had to know the period in order to get the frequency. Without the period, I would have never figured out pi over 14. So my challenge to you is to come up with an equivalent equation to mine that's in terms of sine, and some of your information will be the same, and some will be different. Our equations will look similar. So have a great night, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.